Welcome to chapter 21 of the Wealth Management Essentials course. In this chapter, we're going to build off debt securities and talk about pricing, volatility, and some different strategies. There are three different learning objectives. There is bond market pricing, bond market volatility, and debt security strategies. So we're gonna start with bond market pricing. So credit risk is a primary concern in the bond market and it's a pretty big factor when determining pricing. You have Government of Canada bonds which are considered risk-free and therefore offer the lowest rate. On the other side of things you would have some corporate bonds and depending on the company they might have a lower credit rating meaning they would offer a higher rate for the same price. And the shape of the yield curve, it's often due to interest rate expectations. So one factor of bond pricing is just that credit risk of the bond. Bonds that are lower risk will offer lower rates and riskier bonds with higher risk of uh, defaulting, they would offer higher rates. Bond pricing also has a bit to do with the shape of the yield curve, which is often due to interest rate expectations. So for example, you could have a uh, five-year bond that you purchased, it's offering 5%, and then if interest rates happen to go up, well now you can buy a five-year bond for let's say 6%, and so your 5% bond doesn't look as good, and the price will fall. So when interest rates are expected to increase, then you would have the longer term bonds offering the higher rates. The reason for that is because people or the investors want you to lock into longer term bonds with that current rate um, because let's just say in a year from now, the rates will be higher. Vice versa, if interest rates are expected to decrease, the shorter term bonds will have uh, higher rates because in a few years, when it comes to renew, they're expecting that you would have to renew that bond at a lower rate. Interest rate expectations can be influenced by various different things, including uh, some recent economic activity like GDP, employment, housing, retail sales, industrial surveys, trade balance. Also measures of inflation. That's a pretty key uh, factor into interest rate expectations. So if inflation is coming quite high, well then uh, interest rates tend to go up. And then finally measures of future economic activity also influence interest rate expectation. So uh, index of leading indicators and consumer confidence. Now there's also monetary and fiscal policy which do play a factor. Monetary policy influences the availability and cost of money and credit. So the Bank of Canada can implement monetary policy by uh, interest rate policy, so changing the overnight rate and therefore affecting interest rates, or open market operations by buying or selling T-bills. Fiscal policy guides the spending of the government, which can stimulate the economy. Conversely, increasing taxes has a dampening effect on the economy. Government spending is financed through two ways, taxes and borrowing. So the government does have those two ways that they can try and influence interest rates, um, which then affects bond interest rates. Now looking at bond price volatility, um, so you can see if you have a bond um, that where the yield is, let's just say 5%, so in the middle, we'll look at the 5% and 10 year um, bond. And so you can see if uh, interest rates increase to 6%, well now you can buy a bond for, uh, that, that pays out a 6% coupon. And so your 5% bond is no longer worth as much. So the price for that bond decreases to about $92.56. And then the other side of things, if current rates are 5% and then uh, interest rates drop to 4%, well, you can see now your bond increases in value. It's worth 108.18. So bonds do have that inverse relationship with interest rates and with bond yields. Duration is another important concept when it comes to bonds. Duration is a measure that combines both the impact of the coupon rate and the term to maturity, uh, and it compares it against interest rates. So if interest rates were to increase or decrease, 
Three commonly used measures are Macaulay duration, modified duration, and effective duration. Macaulay duration is a weighted average term to maturity of the present value of a bond's cash flows, including all coupon payments and principal repayment. The Macaulay duration of a zero coupon bond is equal to the bond's term of, uh, to maturity in years. The Macaulay duration of a coupon bond is always less than the bond's term to maturity. And the smaller the coupon, the longer the Macaulay duration. The longer the term to maturity, the longer the Macaulay duration. So those would be some important things to remember for the exam as there could likely be a question about Macaulay duration and uh, they could just tell you uh, what if the coupon is uh, 5% and the term to maturity is 10 years. Well you know that from this rule that the duration of a coupon bond is always less than the bond's term to maturity so it would be less than 10. Uh, you might not have to calculate the exact thing, but just know that uh, that typical rule. On its own, Macaulay duration doesn't really mean much, and it is mainly used to calculate modified duration. Modified duration is a measure of the approximate percentage price change for a 100 basis point change in yield. It's calculated as mod Macaulay duration divided by 1 plus y divided by k, where y is yield and k is the number of coupon payments per period. You also have convexity. So duration, uh, the way it, it's calculated is it looks at a straight line. So you can see uh, the duration approximation of a bond price. It shows the straight line um, based on price and yield, whereas the actual bond price, it does have, it is a curved relationship. And so that's why you add uh, what's called convexity to try and approximate um, that error margin. So modified duration is unable to capture the asymmetry with the price to yield uh, relationship of a bond. Um, therefore, a convexity adjustment allows us to approximate that percentage change due to the convexity of the price yield curve. And so the formula for that um, as you can see, the approximate percentage change due to convexity equals convexity over 2 times the change in y squared times 100. So going through an example, a 10-year 5% semi-annual coupon bond has a duration of 780 when it yields 5%. The convexity of this bond is 7363, so they do give you convexity in the problem. So first you have to calculate the approximate percentage price change. So this you would look at the duration, um, which is uh, 780. And then you would multiply it by the percentage change in the yield. So it's saying that the yield's 5%, and if the yield falls to 4.5, so that's a drop of 50 basis points, well then you multiply the 780 by the 50 basis points time 100, gives you a 3.9% approximate percentage price change. Then you calculate the uh, percentage price change due to the convexity. So that again, that uh, if we go back, that gives you that error margin. So we calculated the straight line, and you're, now you're trying to find that error to make it, uh, to approximate the uh, curvature in the, uh, the actual bond price curve. And so you uh, look at the 7363, which is the convexity. We're just using this formula up here over 2 uh, times the uh, change in the yield. So again, 50 basis points squared. And you can see that it's 0.09%. You add them together. And then you can say that uh, the estimate of the total percentage price change is 3.99%. Now there are also active and passive debt security strategies. The first one uh, with the active debt security strategies is interest rate strategies. So if the investor thinks interest rates will decrease, they would want to increase their portfolio duration. Because as we know, the higher the portfolio duration is, uh, the larger the change in value will be for the change in the interest rate. So if interest rates decrease, the price of bonds go up, you wanna have a higher duration so that the price goes up higher. You do the opposite if interest rates are rising um, because in that scenario, uh, the 
the current value of the bond would go down. So you want to have a lower duration to make it so it wouldn't go down as much. Yield curve strategies, uh, so they are designed by positioning bonds along the maturity spectrum to take advantage of expected changes in the shape of the curve. You might have a bullet portfolio, which is built with one or more bonds with roughly equal durations. A barbell portfolio is built with one or more bonds with short durations, combined with one or more bonds with long durations. Barbell strategies tend to outperform bullet strategies if there is a significant parallel shift in the yield curve or when the yield curve flattens. There's also intermarket spread strategies which are designed to capitalize on the difference in yield spreads and expected changes in yield spreads between different sectors of the bond market. Intra spread strategies are swapping a bond for a similar one in the same sector due to thinking that the new bond may be mispriced. Then there's just passive debt strategies. So again, indexation. So that's uh, an index portfolio. It is designed to track the performance of a specific market index. Um, and so stratified sampling is an approach that takes a market index and divides it into parts called cells. Each cell then represents a different portfolio characteristic such as duration, coupon, maturity, sector, credit rating, etc. And the goal of this process is to match those characteristics. Optimization approach uses mathematical programming to optimize the portfolio based on the stated return ob objectives and constraints. And then you have laddering, which is a strategy that takes away much of the decision making just by staggering maturities so that different portions of the portfolio mature at regular intervals. And quite often you might see laddering um, for clients that may have a GIC portfolio. Well, the same could be done for uh, bonds as well. And so those are all the main concepts in chapter 21. I really hope you found the chapter helpful and I will see you all in chapter 22.